This is Mark Shepard and welcome to the Sunday message. This is Healing Pastures and Apocalypse Gardens, which is, I don't know how to describe it, it's church to me. This is church to me. Thinking deeply about life, love, the land, living in a spiritual but not necessarily religious context. That's what I do on Sundays, the Sunday message. I hope you enjoy it and please stick around for the song. And I have a little, a little treat for you at the very end with some very cute piglets and lambs. So with no further ado, let's jump in to this week's Sunday message, June 12th, 2022. And I hope you're watching this a hundred years from now and I hope things are really doing well with you. Let's get started. Friday afternoon, no, Friday afternoon, it is, what is it, it is Monday, Monday afternoon, I visited with my son today, I'm proud of him, I'm really proud of my son, the boy is brilliant, <laughs> he just turned 30, got his own apartment. He's gonna get a cat tomorrow. He has a job, he's a runner for a pretty high-end restaurant in kind of a place in Hudson, New York. And he's just brilliant at this job. I mean, this job, he's so passionate <laughs> about doing his job well. <sighs> and I'm very proud of him. So we had lunch. It was good. Ooh, sounds like a pileated woodpecker out there. And it's a beautiful day. And I just, I'm tired. Whenever I stop, it seems like it takes me a couple of days to just kind of like... Because I don't know. They're, that's definitely a pileated woodpecker. Because there's something sad about the fact that my youngest son is 30 years old. We are moving through time. At age 61, you know, death is a lot closer than when it is at 30, even though it could come and take any of us anytime. There's something so wonderful and sad about the human condition. My dad and mom brought me into the world. It's a gift, but they made me have to die, <laughs> right? I brought, my ex-wife and I brought our children into the world and we gave them life and it's a gift. But if we hadn't brought them in, they wouldn't be facing their death. And none of them are having children. Think about that. Think about my family of three kids, none of them having children, multiplied by a million people. 
that's it's not going to take long for the population to adjust downward. So in the next hundred years, there will be fewer and fewer people. And there will still be jobs to do. And because there are fewer people, the prices of things will go down. And because fiat currency will probably end and Bitcoin will replace it, any amount of Bitcoin you have will become worth more and more and more over time. That's the theory. It seems like that could happen. It seems like we are on the edge of a change that is so dramatic, so huge, so transformative that just to be alive right now is a gift. <laughs> just to see how it's all gonna go down. How's it going to go down? The Erie Canal was a radical action. It was an action taken by people working together. It is maintained by the people of the state of New York. It is a collaboration. Never in the history of the world before this time, before the 20th and the 21st century, before these times, before the 19th century, entire countries didn't collaborate like this. These infrastructure things didn't exist. And the idea, the radical idea of a social safety net so people aren't starving in the streets is an innovation. It's not something to be ashamed of or to be thrown away lightly. If the Republicans would have their way, you know, there would be no social safety net. And we would have poverty like you would never imagine. People would be starving. We would be stepping over bodies in the street of people who had nowhere to go because they were broke. And where are they gonna go? What if you had a million people who had no money and who were starving? Do you really want that? I'm against big government too. I'm against overregulation. I want to have the freedom to create, the freedom to contribute to society, to think my own thoughts and to disagree publicly with other people and with the government without fear of going to jail. That's really important. But the Erie Canal is falling apart. You just look at the concrete. The concrete is disintegrating. Kind of like our democracy has been breaking down. And we can't allow that to happen. I'm not a political person. I don't like talking about politics. So I've just dedicated my life to doing what I was put here to do in a way that doesn't take anything from the common good or from the commons and that instead contributes to the commons. And if more and more people did that, if more and more people dedicated their lives to building something for the commons, to endow a farm church with all of my music, and to give our house as the manse for a future ministers once I'm no longer here. <laughs> I want to create something that can go forward through time. Creating great music, helping people to become profitable farmers in a spiritual context. What if every farm were part of a monastery of people who were dedicating their lives to protecting the food supply? <laughs> 
agriculture that doesn't need inputs can save the world and it can make a profit because the fewer expenses you have, the more money is left over. It's also raising meat correctly as in the same way that nature would raise meat is not only profitable, but it's the most nutritious way to go. And to give the animals mineral, which they then distribute back to the land through their manure, adds minerals to the land, plus fertilizer to the land. And when we lay down hay, uh, you know, in the winter months, on the land, directly on the land, not in a feeder, it feeds the soil. It's carbon. And the worms love it. And they digest it and add more nutrients back into the soil and a spongy layer of decomposing material that absorbs water. So we hold more water on our land. So when there is a drought, and there will be one, our farms are more resilient. And when other farmers are going broke, our farms are prospering. So those are some thoughts. <laughs> On a Monday, that feels to me like a Friday because boy, it feels like, okay, I did everything I needed to do. And now I'm kind of off the clock. I'm getting ready to go home tomorrow morning. And I'm going to start working on the new land. So it's going to be busy. It's going to be busy. But I also have another song that's just about ready to release. Hopefully I can release it this weekend, if not this weekend, the next weekend. And I have a whole video about making bacon that I need to edit and release. Blah, blah, blah. There's a lot going on. But the reality is this life is a gift, and we don't know how long it's going to be. Any one of us could die today. The next drunk driver, a deer, a meteor. I mean, we went away for the weekend once years ago, and we heard on NPR that a meteor, a meteorite, had landed literally a block away from where we were living and just nailed right through somebody's car. <laughs> and luckily, no one was standing there, right? Like, I could be sitting here and a meteorite could hit me. So the reality is, we could be upset about that. That's just the reality of everyone, death and taxes. The thing is to use our minds to be so prosperous and so abundant and so wise with how we invest or use our money that we can thrive and we can prosper and have enough to give back to the community. But our lives are short, we don't know. So do what you wanna do now. Do what you want to do now. Do it, do it now, start, start today. <laughs> and so many of you who have been writing to me, who have been watching these videos, I just, I so appreciate hearing from you. It matters to me. And to hear stories from you of how you are just changing one little thing or just moving one step closer to the thing you really wanna do, um, that just excites me. I had a, a wonderful conversation over the weekend with a dear friend of mine who is one of my NLP students. And he's doing really well and he's applying things and he's working on himself and he's been, he's taking himself into therapy. <clears throat> he's working with kind of a shamanic healer and he's making progress. <clears throat> he's building a business. His business is thriving, even 
through the pandemic, even in these uncertain times. It's in our minds, people. Our reality and what's going on in our world is literally in our minds. You can focus on recession, you can focus on poverty, you can focus on war, you can focus on strife, you can focus on anything you want. But why not focus your mind on creating the kind of life you will look back from your deathbed and see as the best life you could have possibly lived. And that you have no regrets and there's nothing else to do. And it's time to let go and pass away into that good night. That's the kind of life I wanna have, that I want you to have. And if we have that, Who gets the benefit? Well, wherever we come from, source gets the benefit of our story, of our life force. When we return to source, when we are the wave on the sea of awareness that has lifted up into the air and now has come back down, has landed on the shore and is now being absorbed back into the sea of awareness, that is the purpose of our lives. Nourishing the divine with our life story. If we are God, expressing him or herself through our individuality, when we return, we take that with us and that's, that's our gift. The ancient seers of Mexico, at great, great cost, determined to see the source of all that is. They called it the eagle. And they saw little puffs of consciousness floating up to what they interpreted as the eagle's mouth or the eagle's beak. <laughs> and they were going inside and they determined that our story is the eagle's food. I don't agree with that interpretation. I think we are literally pulses of energy that source sends out on threads. We're threads of awareness and we're, can, we're tied back to source. And when it's time, when our flame is coming to a close it's we just give that the record of our existing to all that is to the source to God whatever you want to call it so that motivates me even more to live the best life I can to do the best I can and it's so it was so exciting today to see my son Miles living a simple, almost monastic life, doing but doing what he wants to do. He has a job where he works four days a week and that frees him up to do his love of video games and to write and to read. And so he's living a wealthy life, but he's paying for it, right? No one's helping him. He is independent and on his own. So if you think if God is our ultimate parent and gives us life and sends us into this world, I think it's my personal belief that when we die, we return to source. And we all, we all before we came in, decided how long it was going to be and then we forgot. <laughs> before we came in, we came in on on a mission or as support characters for other people's mission and the living out of our life's purpose. It's like when I'm in flow and there's a great book by Mihaly Chuck Mihaly <laughs> called flow. And when I'm in flow, the ideas flow 
and the movement flows and what I need to do flows and everything gets done when it's supposed to get done and the things that aren't important don't. <laughs> and every day, every step of the way, there are things I need to work on in myself. There are ideas that I need to capture and there are ideas I need to let go. And to see my 30 year old son making progress reminded me of when I was 30 and reminded me of when you were 30 or are going to be 30. Whoever's watching this, whenever you're watching this, maybe a hundred years from now. What will it be like when the world population naturally decreases without anybody uh, sterilizing anybody just because children are expensive <laughs> and as the world finds ways to take care of all of us as a tribe and to integrate the technology that's coming we need to be able to trust that it's going to be okay. And that's a practice. That's a discipline to trust that it's going to be okay. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. You're doing it. I'm proud of you for going for it for becoming who you most long to be. Kawabunga. Shazam. Peace, love, and grooviness. That's all for now. Over and out. Boom. surfaces of things I allow the light to penetrate my heart and cause me to see and flow through me flow through me flow
So hey, thank you so much for watching this far. Most people don't get this far and you have and I really appreciate you. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Please leave a thumbs up. Please leave a comment below and let me know who you're proud of in your life and make sure you tell them. If there's somebody in your life who you're proud of, make sure you tell them. Can you see the, can you see the pick list behind me? I'm proud of you boys. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> so thanks so much i'll see you next time there's so much coming my friend josh and i've been uh working on the spring there's a natural spring at the land that i'm leasing and uh that's almost ready and then i gotta bring my uh i gotta clear some paths so i can put some temporary fencing up and then i gotta get the big pigs over there and then move the sheep over there and then in july i'm getting 10 more sheep and uh, I think Red Girl might be having piglets in August. So there's a lot here happening as I build this very small farm into something a little larger. And at the same time, do my best to practice what I preach, to take exquisite care of myself as well as my 95 year old dad and the land and the animals and to keep recording these songs that uh, Spirit somehow has trusted me to uh to deliver so that's it for now peace love grooviness over and out boom come on guys come say hello i'm proud of you you're doing a great job being a piglet yeah Hi, sheep. You know, I'm very proud of you, sheep. You're doing a great job.